everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing my Book Expo book haul. So a couple of things before we get into it. One, thank you guys for being patient with me for disappearing for a bit. I just didn't feel like filming. I don't really know how to describe it, but I felt really just unmotivated. Is that a word? I don't know. Now it is, but I just didn't feel like doing anything, so I didn't. Usually I'll like push past that and force myself, but this time I just kind of let it be and I lazed around and was just bad, I guess. I don't know, but I'm feeling pretty inspired again to make some videos, so I'm going to be doing some filming today and hopefully I won't like sit down to edit stuff and be like why do I do this but I went to book expo and book con this year this was my second year going and it was tons of fun thank you to everyone who stopped us and said hello we had so much fun meeting you guys and by we I mean bookmarked as a whole because a lot of you guys came and met the three of us so it was just a blast to talk to all of you and it always is so strange to see you guys in person like I'm not doing a book expo vlog because I didn't end up really getting any footage but go and watch Hannah's because it's great. I've watched it like a million times. Also the bloopers that she did, but she like nailed it when she was describing at the end what it's like to meet you guys. It's just very surreal and I think she had a great description for that. So I will link that down below for you guys if you want to watch a book expo vlog since I will not have one this year. But I've only been twice, but this year was very different. There weren't that many books that I was really excited about and the ones that I was really excited about, I didn't end up getting <clears throat> Ninth House, which Hannah got. But I did still pick up some books that I am excited about. I just didn't get nearly as many as I did last year, but I decided to kind of do this as a combo with some arcs that I've received recently. And by recently, I mean like since January because my book hauls have been all over the place. I've been all over the place. Welcome to my channel. What else do you expect? But without further ado, let's just get into the books, starting with the ones that I got at Book Expo. So I'm going to start with the one book that I actually had sought out and wanted to get at Book Expo. The rest of them, I just kind of happened upon and happened to pick them up. I was like, that sounds like it might be kind of interesting. So sure. But this one, I like waited in line and actually got it. And that is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Ruta Sepetis is one of my favorite authors. She is definitely one of my favorite historical fiction authors. She writes such amazing stories as Salt to the Sea and Between Shades of Grey. And they're just so, so fabulous. So when I heard she was coming out with a new book, I knew I had to get my hands on it. So this book comes out October 22nd and it's kind of a bit different than the other things that I've read by her. The other two books that I've read by her have focused on the World Wars. I think both of them were World War II, if I'm remembering correctly, but this is actually set in Madrid post-Spanish Civil War, which is a time period that I'm not all that familiar with. I really admittedly don't know that much about it, but it's something that I always want to learn more about historical things, so I think she's going to do a great job of introducing me to that time period in this book because I trust her and I think it's going to be good. But this follows Daniel, who is actually a tourist. He is visiting Spain in the hopes of learning more about his mother's birthplace and connecting with it through one of his favorite hobbies, which is photography. But he ends up coming into a Spain that is a bit tumultuous, and he figures that out through the pictures that he's taking, but also the girl that he meets named Anna or Anna, I'm not really sure. But her family is still reeling from the Spanish Civil War, and they are still living under a fascist dictatorship, so he is exposed to a world that he's definitely not expecting. I think learning alongside Daniel is going to be very interesting. And like I said, Ruta Petty's just does such a great job with historical fiction. You can tell how much care and time went into the research and she really builds up her characters to seem like real people and real stories that you're reading, even though they are entirely fictional. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. It's definitely bigger than her other books. Like it's tall and usually they're short, but I'm still excited to read it nonetheless. Next is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. Mahurin? I don't know how to say that. I am really sorry about that. But this is coming out September 3rd and it is a new fantasy, but it deals with witches, which sounds so cool. Also, the main character's last name is LeBlanc, which is my last name, although she has a space in it and like half of my family spells it with the space in it, but half of us don't. It's really confusing, but I thought it was very interesting that the character had my last name. I've never seen that before. But Louise lives in a world where witches in the church are fighting, so it kind of reminds me of like actual history and like the Salem witch trials and stuff like that. 
that. So witches are burned at the stake, they're hunted by the church, and Louise makes the decision to flee her coven and hide out and give up all her magic in order to do that. Now her path ends up crossing with Reed, who is a member of the church, and their paths cross in a really interesting way, and that is marriage. So whenever I say marriage, I just have in my head like the, what's it called, the princess bride thing, where it's like marriage. Like that's all I can think of. But I've heard some really great things about this book. I know Emma over at Emma Books read it and really loved it, and all of us were very excited to get our hands on a copy, so I'm excited to read it. I don't know if I'll read it like before Halloween, or I'm trying not to do that, like not save all my books for the perfect time of year because it gets a little bit ridiculous, but I guess whenever I'm in the mood for it, I'll pick it up, and if that is Halloween, then so be it. Next is Stargazing by Jen Wang. This is totally an out of my comfort zone read. I tend to gravitate toward the same things, which I used to be like, no, like read outside of your comfort zone, which I still think is great, but like I also am like, I need to accept the fact that some of these things I'm not going to like. But this one, I kind of gave into peer pressure a little bit, and I was like, okay, I'll try it. So Hannah and Zoe both read, what was it, The Prince and the Dressmaker, and this is by the same author, but it is a graphic novel, and both of them are graphic novels, and I tend to not like graphic novels. I don't know why. It's very frustrating because I feel like everything about a graphic novel is something that I should enjoy. I mean, it's literally just like beautiful art and words combining to tell a story. Like, why don't I usually like them? I can't explain it. Maybe I just haven't found the right one, but they encouraged me to give this one a chance. So I went, it was actually an autographing thing. So like she signed it and drew a little picture, which is so, so cute. But this is also a middle grade graphic novel. So everything about it is very different for me, but I'm excited to try it out. I know Hannah read it and enjoyed it. So I feel encouraged, but it seems to be a realistic story, but also with a kind of twist of magic. So it's about Moon and Christine and they end up forming an unlikely friendship and Moon tells her the secret where he like communicates with celestial beings that like tell him that he doesn't belong on earth. I'm really confused by it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna read it and see how it is. But this is coming out on September 10th. Sorry, I couldn't find it on my list. Next is actually a finished copy that I got and that is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is the author of An Enchantment of Ravens and it is actually out now. So it came out on June 4th, I believe, but I saw that everyone was getting arcs of this book and I was so jealous because I was so excited for it. Like it just seems like it's right up my alley. And then Kat from Katie Tastic ended up getting a finished copy at BookCon and I was like, oh, I'm so jealous. And she was like, do you want it? And I was like, really? So then I took it. So thank you so much, Kat. I'm very excited to have this. It is also a signed copy, which is always exciting, but I don't fully remember what this one is about. I just know I really enjoyed An Enchantment of Ravens and this one has to do with sorcery, but also like a magical library. So I'm like, there's literally nothing else that I want in this world than this book. And I feel like it could be the book that will bring me back into the fantasy realm of enjoying those stories since I've been struggling so much recently. The last few books I received all at a Fierce Reads party, which was really exciting. So thank you to them for inviting me. But I've got four books that they gave us in a tote bag here that I wanted to talk about. So the first one is Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. This is the author of The Kiss of deception struggles but this book is a companion to that series but it's also the sequel to dance of thieves i couldn't have made that more confusing if i tried basically you have to read dance of thieves before you read this but you don't have to read the original trilogy before you read this i'm making it even more confusing but i haven't read dance of thieves yet i do own it it's back on my shelf over there somewhere yonder i don't really know right now but i do want to read it because i enjoyed the kiss of deception a lot and i like her writing style but i haven't finished that trilogy yet so like basically this is another book that I need to get caught up on and it's just going to add to my ever-growing pile of sequels that I will read eventually but like when will eventually come? Probably when I'm in my grave. But if you have read the first book the sequel is coming out August 6th so look out for it. Next is another out of my comfort zone read that I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep it but then Zoe and Hannah were and because I have FOMO I'm like well if you're gonna read it then I need to read it. So that is The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. It might actually be Faring, I'm not too sure but she spoke at that event and it was really interesting to hear her speak about this book but the reason I say that it's out of my comfort zone is because it's like a thriller mystery story and that's not generally what I gravitate towards because I'm a giant chicken so every now and again I will delve more into it usually around Halloween so I feel like this is a book that I will probably see for Halloween even though I said I wasn't gonna do that I think with this one I will but this is coming out September 24th and it is set at this very isolated finishing school that is at the very tip of South America and it's described as a gothic 
psychological thriller with a haunting twist. So basically there's 10 girls in the class, but the 10th girl is missing and like people start acting like they're possessed and stuff. So that sounds like something that will keep me up at night. Love that for me. But because I have intense FOMO, I'm still gonna read it. Now the last two books that I got at the Fierce Reads party are both ones that I'm very excited about, but I read the synopsises or synopses, whatever you want to call them, before I do book hauls and I kind of take like point form notes so then I won't be like, oh, this is a book, it has characters and there's a plot and yeah, excited. I still do that sometimes, but I cannot with fantasy synopsises recently. It is so much. They all sound the same. Like I want to do a whole video about like YA fantasy because lately it's all like, how can we be like Six of Crows? So both of these books were guilty of that and I truly am excited for both of them. I just like read the synopsis one after the other and I was like, I'm sorry, is this the exact same thing? So the books that I'm talking about are Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo and There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. Now I will talk about these books individually, but what I'm talking about with the synopsis is they have like this thing where they list like things, like personality traits basically. I tweeted about this, but it makes me think of The Breakfast Club where they're like a brain, a criminal, a nerd, like an outcast, a princess, and like can they save their world or will they doom it? That's essentially what's happening in here. So if you think that it sounds like I'm repeating myself while I'm talking about these books, that's why, because they have that same sort of description style. But that long tangent aside, I'm going to start off by talking about Into the Crooked Place. So this is by the author of To Kill a Kingdom, which I thoroughly enjoyed. That was a Little Mermaid retelling that I read last year and it was a lot darker than I was expecting and I think that this is going to be a dark one as well. It's set in like this gritty underground sort of city. It's not like actually underground. I just can't think of the word to describe it. But like basically it's an interesting city and you follow four characters. So we have a busker, a gangster, a warrior, and a resistance fighter. So all of them come together after the busker uses dark magic that she didn't even know she had and it ends up sparking this giant war and they have to come together but they can't trust anyone, not even each other. So sounds interesting. I definitely get Six of Crows vibes, which always makes me excited. But I think that while I was listening to them describe it at the event, it sounded a lot better. And that's actually kind of true of most of these books. Like the synopsis doesn't really describe it as well as I think they did. But I'm still very excited for this. I feel like I did a terrible job of making you excited about it. But I really enjoyed her other book. So definitely check it out if you're looking for something that's going to be like a little bit of a gritty fantasy with like this ragtag team and all that stuff. Sounds great to me. I'm really not not mad about it. I know it seems like I am, but I promise I'm not. So that brings me to There Will Come a Darkness, which I think they described as being like Avatar The Last Airbender. So then like Hannah and everyone was like, oh my god. And I'm like, I've seen like three episodes and it was good. But this is set in a world where the seven prophets guided humanity. They like kept any wars from happening and all of that stuff. And they ended up suddenly disappearing and leaving this final prophecy that said that there was going to be like the savior that was going to come and could either save their world or doom it. So in this book, we have five characters in our little team here. So we have an exiled prince, a ruthless killer, a once faithful leader, a reckless gambler, and a dying girl who's about to give up. I'm sorry that I had to read that. They were just way more descriptive than the other books. So I'm excited to see how they are going to come together in the end and what the dynamic will be like. I love the group dynamic. I just think it's so funny that all of the synopsises are like the same sort of list thing. I truly enjoy it. Like I like books like that. There's plenty that I've read like that that I really liked, but it just made me laugh. So so those are all the books that I picked up at Book Expo. Now I have a few arcs that I've gotten recently that I wanted to talk about briefly. Also, this is coming out on October 8th and this is coming out on September 3rd. So first up is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Look at how cute this is. Thank you so much to Penguin for sending this to me. I like opened it up and I was like, oh my god, I know her. Who is she? But it was a lovely surprise and I am so excited for this book. This is actually by Nicola Yoon's husband, which I think is just so cute that they're both writers and their covers are kind of similar too. So it's kind of like they go together. I just think that's awesome. But this follows our main character whose name is currently escaping me, but I really don't want to re-say everything that I just said, so gonna keep talking. Frank! Oh my god, you idiot! Frankly in love. And I'm like, who? What's his name? It's Frank. Wow. Gosh. So Frank is in what he dubs limbo. He is caught between his traditional Korean parents and the upbringing that they want for him and his roots in Southern California. So he feels like he is kind of caught in between that. And one of the main rules that his parents have is if you're gonna date, it has to be a Korean girl. But of course, that is not who he goes after. He goes after a white girl. So he meets Joy, who is also in the 
same limbo and they decide to make a pact where they are going to pretend to date each other so then they can be free to date who they really want to. But of course, that's not gonna go according to plan. Fake dating is a trope that I haven't really read about that often, but like I do enjoy it. So I'm excited to see it in this book and I think that he seems like he's going to be a great writer. So I'm very pumped for his debut. And this is coming out September 10th. Next is The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. This is one of the books that they were also talking about at the Furious Reads party. I just didn't pick it up there, but they made it sound really, really interesting. And I don't think that the synopsis really makes it sound that interesting, but it follows a future chieftain and a fugitive prince and a too cunning bodyguard and how their stories converge. I don't really like get a feel for the world in here and I'm not too sure how crows are involved, but like I'm excited to learn more. I feel like that's another thing in fantasy books. It has to have a crow in it apparently, which once again, six of crows. But I truly am really excited for this book. I think that they made it sound cool. They said that it, I think this was the one that they said was like pretty romantic. So I'm like, cool, I'm on board for that. And this is coming out July 30th. Next is A Dress for the Wicked by Autumn Krauss. I actually started this book and I never got the chance to finish it. And it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it. I forget what I ended up picking up instead. I think my attention just wandered, but this does seem like such a cool story. So it follows this girl who feels like she's doomed to be a country girl forever and just live her ordinary life. But then the most prestigious fashion house ends up opening its design design competition to anyone. So it doesn't just have to be people who live in the city, which is like the fashion capital. They used to be the only people who are allowed to compete, but now she gets the chance to compete. So she enters this competition determined to make a name for herself and break out of her small country girl world. I can't quite remember if this was like fantastical or dystopian. I think that may have been one of my confusions when I started it. I didn't know like what to make of the world so much, but maybe that will become clear as I get further along into it. I think I only got like 40 pages or something, so that's not very long. But I love that it's kind of like Devil Wears Prada vibes, but it's also like, I can't help but think of like, I don't know, Carrie Underwood or something like that. Like small country girl, like small town girl who's trying to just make it big. It just really reminds me of those two things and I'm interested to see how they're going to combine in this story. And this one is out on on August 6th. Next is The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen. This book is actually already out, but I got the arc kind of later, so I didn't get the chance to talk about it, but I have never read a Sarah Dessen book before. Somehow I just skipped that phase. I don't know. I know so many people have. I know my sister read her books and stuff, but I never picked one up. I don't know, but this one sounds very interesting. So it is about a girl whose mother died when she was young, and since then it's only been her and her dad until she ends up going for the summer to stay with her mother's parents. So she is staying with her grandparents whom she hasn't seen since she was like 10 years old when her mom died. So when she goes to stay with her grandparents, she finds herself really torn between these two identities, who she knows she is with her dad and now who she is with her grandparents and like kind of dealing with some things that she hasn't dealt with in a really long time, including she meets with this guy that she knows from her childhood and he ends up bringing up a lot of nostalgia that she's not really sure if she's ready to deal with yet. This sounds like it's going to be the perfect kind of hard-hitting summer contemporary so I'm looking forward to checking it out. And finally is Slay by Brittany Morris. I've seen a lot of buzz surrounding this book, so I'm really excited to see what it's all about, but the synopsis sounds so cool. So Slay is like this online card role-playing game, and the main character, Kira, is one of the only black kids at her school, but in the world of Slay, she is one of hundreds of thousands of black kids who love playing this game. But what no one knows about Kira is that she is actually a game developer. That's something that she's kind of hidden from from everyone, but things end up taking an unexpected twist when there's a murder and it is due to something that happened in the world of Slay. So she ends up dealing with a lot of conflicts and like the media is just taking it and running with it. And there are a lot of issues that in this fictional story are being brought up that really aren't fictional. So I'm interested to see how it's going to be unpacked in the pages of this book. And I think the concept sounds so fascinating. So I'm excited for it. And this book is coming out on September 24th. So that is all for this book haul. I still have so much Many books that I've bought recently that I need to haul. So I will have another haul coming like soon-ish, but I'm trying to kind of space them out a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. I hope that you are excited that I'm back with videos. I don't really know what I'm saying, but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!